Hello and how are you? My name is Mahinda Mubarak and I welcome you to our 30th lecture of creating a complete inventory management system using uh, Laravel and uh, Flutter. So we always do 40 minutes, so I'll come and start our counter and without waiting much time, let's go straight to our today's business. So in the previous lecture, uh, we designed this uh, uh, structure and then we look at different functions that we're going to create uh, so we, pre we finish this first function that is fetching the data and uh, is supposed to save it on the what on the local database so this is where we are right now so we successfully fetched the data and we have it here so what we're going to do right now is to save this data on the, this local database so this one can be able to come and collect it here so in other words we can just simply do like this let me I make it much more clear to you. All right, so that's where we are, that's where we are. Okay, so we are on this function. So in the previous lecture, we successfully came here to financial periods. And if you come here uh, to the console and you click on fetch records, we're able to get the records and you see the data that was being uh, put in the console. So in this uh, lecture, now we're going to take it from here, okay? So uh, at this point, so this is our, our what? Our, um, our financial period model and then we have this point where we have got the code and then like uh, the messages here and uh, so now the first thing that we're going to do we're going to check if the code is not if the code is not one then we know that there is a problem okay so if the code is not one we shall know that there is a problem so let me go ahead and say if uh if the code is not one if it's not one so i know that there is a what there is a problem so i can just simply say utils dot uh, have, we have not created a toast uh function let's go ahead and create it okay so we'll come here to our what to our console i mean we shall come here to our to our um, utils class uh class and then you go ahead and create a static uh static what static void okay and we call it toast Okay, then it will take a message and uh, the color of the background. Okay, color like this. So we can just simply do the the what the snap bar get. Okay, put snack bar and then put here a lot and then you can say maybe it should be in the bottom and then you pass the message and then you put here the colors okay the context colors you pass the context color mm -hmm. the background should be white i mean the background should be the color that we shall have passed and then the the contest color can be white we can even make this color an option that it is uh, it should only be specified when it is uh, necessary so to make it an option i'll just come and make it this curl bracket here and make a color like this and then make it to be green okay so by default it will be green so you see that's all so this color you can maybe call it c to make it simple so this color will only be uh, will only be passed when we are specifying or when we need specified uh, so let's go ahead and put here a toast. So we're going to be toast, and then in the first we put the message, which is uh, which is what, 
which is uh, uh, the, the one that will have come. Maybe you can just simply say, uh, you can come and say, failed uh, to fetch data. I mean, so fail, fail to fetch. Let me get this word endpoint or maybe the table. Okay, let fail to fetch, fail to get, fail to fetch, and then I put the endpoint table, and then I put maybe and then say because, and then I put the message here. So you can see the advantage of Copilot. It is helping me to finish a few things by auto suggestion. So I will keep using it so as you also get inspired and get used or learning how to use it so i'll go ahead and do what and do return here okay and uh uh yeah that's it that's it that's it that's it that's it that is all right so after doing that now let's go ahead and uh so if it fails if the code is not one then i know that something wasn't right okay so i return here okay so now remember if the co if the if the data is offline i just return i don't even do anything okay now here uh, now I have a fresh data. So what I'm going to do before I, I start saving the data, since I have, I have, I have, I am connected. Remember, I'm not passive. I'm not connected. I am connected, and I have something that has come that is not an error from the server or something that is offline or something like that. Uh, it has successfully passed this level. The code is one. Now I'm at this level now. Like everything is now fine. So since everything is now fine, what do I do? I have to delete everything that is offline because I have new data that has come. Whether it is new data or it has been deleted from online, I have to update the what? I have to update this offline one, okay? So I have data that is coming. I mean, this red line, let me make this line red one, okay? So we're on this. So when you made a HTTP request, we're on this line. When you made the HTTP request, we on this line when we made it right now we on this uh green line okay saving the data we are here now we want to save the data offline so we want to first delete everything that is offline so i have i can create here my function for deleting all so i can come here and say create function called delete all okay i can say delete all <laughs> i don't know how this copilot had you see, it, I just said delete all, it had just written delete all. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and uh, write the logic of deleting all. So let me come here and say delete all. So the delete all is going to be... Uh, it's going to be... It's going to be what? I'm going to... I'm going to do what? I'm going to... Uh, where is the save? It's going to look much more like the saving one, eh? Okay, so I have to make sure that the table is initialized, and then after making sure the table is initialized, then uh, we save. So I think we already have done something like this in the login in the login user. So let's just borrow the things. Okay, so init table we have it here. So we're going to first create the init table logic. Okay, so we can just copy this one. Let's just copy this init table, and then after. We do what? We uh, uh, this after this init table. We're going to first copy this init table, and then after we we put our own data. So I'll come here to this one and copy this. So let me come here and put the initialized table. I just paste it there. Okay, it's called init table. We already have it in the logged in method. So here to receive a what? To receive the database DB. So I don't want to rethink again. That's why I just use this one. Okay. And then here it will go ahead and say if the database is not open, it will return that the database is open. So I can maybe make here a utils dot toast, okay, toast and say the database is not open. Fail to open the database, and then I return back the read. And then I put here maybe the specific database, okay. So that's it, okay. And uh, so after doing that, uh, the next thing I'm going to go ahead. And create now the table okay so the table so i have to get this table name or oh, for us we call it table you can call it one thing get the table a table name i think let's just i think we should call it table name 
okay so let's just go wherever there is a table all right let's call it table no problem i can call it table name i just come here and right click and then say i uh, refact and i say rename and then sorry right click refactor rename and then you put there the new name okay so there we go uh so there we go so we are in this function of initializing the table okay we are in this function of initializing the table so we're going to say any table and then you pass the database and then here we check if the table is not open i mean the database is open we just return back that the database was not open all right so after doing that then we go ahead and uh, say sql sql create table if not exist then we're going to put here all the variables that we have in top there okay so i'll come and copy the variables i'll come uh in the bottom here and let me paste them here just for the sake of copying and paste so integer uh integer is already there so the rem there i mean sorry the id is already there as an integer and the primary key so what you're going to add there is the username and text i mean sorry the the remaining things so i can come here so in, in in that you can just simply write new lines like that okay so i put comma created at and then i make it text so the next thing is going to be updated at uh -huh, so let me uh -huh, so i cut this one make sure that you write them clearly company id and then i come and put the name and then come and put the start date okay and then come and put the end date okay so i'll come here and put the status and then i'll come here and put the description and then i come here and put the total come and put the sales data sales come and put the um, profits and then come and put the what the expenses so after doing that i can come here so here where there is id we add another one of id i mean of text company text so it should be able to show the name so that is how we create the table so make sure that the table is all organized like that don't put a comma to the last here don't put a comma here and then you face into the challenges so that is our table for what for 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 the financial uh, period remember the table are referencing it here so that is the initial table okay so it go ahead and do db execute and then if it fails it returns this it fails because of that all right so that is our initial table so uh now we want to delete delete all so we shall first get the database so it's going to be database is equals to uh, database db equals to await get util dot get db okay if it fails i just return from there can even make some kind of toast okay so if it uh, works if it works i go ahead and do db.delete okay db.delete all right so we can as well use the same the same logic here uh, of sending back the string so if it fails i go ahead and return the what the error okay so if it works clearly i go back and return whatever has come okay so we know also return return await okay so you know sorry 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 this delete so let's try surround it with try and catch try so if it is successful we return an empty string just remember our logic for successful we return an empty if it's not successful i return the what the error it failed to initialize this table because and then you get the issue uh so after doing that now let's go ahead and call this delete all function on top there uh so i'll come here so this is the delete all function let me repeat again this is the delete all function to just delete uh everything that is in this particular table without any what without any condition if you want pass condition you can put comma and then put the where uh -huh. so it will first initialize the table and i've shown you how to initialize the table we have already discussed about this okay so it's just the same we just copy and then modify all right so uh let's go ahead and now delete everything before we insert so i'm just going to say um try and let's say uh, 
okay so you try to await delete all and then you put your catch and then if it fails you just say maybe fail to delete okay so something like that and they just so the delete all will not stop me from what from proceeding i can just leave it or i can just simply uh display it and i proceed <laughs> in case it just fail and put your color uh color of red so in case it fails i just display that something went wrong but i do what i proceed all right so that is how we do it we check for the we delete all so deleting all now the next thing is going to be you are going to, you, are, you have deleted everything here and now i'm going to insert things there okay so we're going to look at the data the kind of data that we have okay so if i click here you look at the kind of data that we have um let's see so okay something not right okay come here to run sorry i was on the wrong place okay so you see the data the data is inside here data 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 here okay so we have to access this one through this data so let's look at this data so we just simply go and say um if okay so that is how we can access the data okay wait <laughs> this thing is doing it fast okay? all right let me first show you so the data is inside the what the response to data if the what is one so after we go ahead and get this data so i look through it let me just look through it before i just so let me just look through it before i display before i do any logic there so we'll just simply say for variable and then you say um response the data let's just put this on the console print and then say the string and you see if it is really uh passing these things correctly so if i come here and i click receive so you can see that uh, our record is there it has come uh, successfully so if it's your main record you should be able to uh, to show up properly so now uh here i want us to do this thing in form of transactions so let's say that you have uh, 1000 records 1000 record will take time for you to save them one by one on what on database so it would be wise uh, if you first put them in one thing in kind of one sql and then save them at once that is when you can have a faster application so that way we call it transactions i've already done something like that on my other application so let me just go there and borrow some leaf So this is how we create a transaction so after making sure that the data the data type is a list okay after making sure that data type is a list after making sure that uh, everything is connected and then you go ahead and delete everything uh, so the next thing is not to save these ones okay so what you do you get the database and then you open what you call a transaction and then you create what you call a batch which is a transaction dot batch and then you look through the data so as you're looking through this data you convert it into an object that you want to save in the database and then you insert it into this batch okay so at this point it is not saving it on the database okay so when you finish everything you go ahead and do what you call the batch commit so it can actually not save it on the what on the database so that is how you can do like uh, you can save uh, the things on the local database very very fast compared to saving one by one so let's go ahead and do that so the first thing so we at this point let me cancel this let me just begin from here so we are at this point so the first thing let's first make sure that we, uh let's first get the data type okay let's first get the data type so we can just know that we are dealing with the right things so let's first come and say uh print and then we just go and say um uh response response to the data dot 
data sorry dot data dot what dot runtime and then say dot to string so this is how you shall get the what the data type okay so let's make sure that the data type is a what is a list before we look through it okay so i'll call that you see there it, is, it has a dynamic list okay so you can just check if it is not a list you just return okay so i'll just go ahead and say if uh this one the runtime dot to string dot to lower okay to lower uh does not contain contain okay i can put this one here does not contain a uh, list let me come and put here the note okay, so i'll sound this one with a bracket and this it does not contain list then i know that see, it is not the right thing so maybe fetch to this as fail and then i just go ahead and return so i'll just display the error and then i go ahead and return all right so that is how i'll go ahead and do it that's how i'll go ahead and see and make sure that this one at least to proceed here should be a what it should be a list okay so after making sure that we are, it is a list so the next thing we can look through it okay so let's look through it now so to look through it which i just simply say our for variable can say x in and then you put the list that you want to look through it and then after after doing that after doing that now we are going to get uh, one trans. I mean, we are going to first create. We are going to first get our database. So our database. So I just simply say our database db equals to await utils dot get db. So I get the database. Okay. After getting the database, I make sure that the table is initialized. Okay. Uh, any table. So we go ahead and check and initialize the table. So we can now as well check the response, okay? Response. I mean a string of response. You know this in it table will return a what? A string. Is it? Yeah, it will return a string. Okay. So we make sure that uh, maybe uh, maybe table response, okay? So it will turn a string. If it turns something that is not empty, we know that the table has failed to be initialized. Okay. So I check if uh, it is not empty, I will just go ahead and say fail to initialize this table. And then I put the what? The reason why it was not, it was failed and make this one read. So there I'll be able to know that the reason why the table was not what? The table was not initialized. So now I have the table initialized at this point. And now I'm now going to look through the data that has come from internet, okay? And then we save it. So before we start looping, we have to create a batch transaction, okay? So to create a batch transaction, this is how I create it. We just simply say batch, and this is transaction dot batch. So this transaction dot batch, we have to surround it. Sorry. Okay. We have to do like this. So you just simply say, let me explain it. You just simply say await db, await db dot transaction. So you have a database set dot transaction, and then after you open this transaction. So you can call this one now what? A transaction. So they'll give you a transaction here. So after having that transaction inside there, so you see how I've opened it, just dip the trust and then open bracket, and then you'll save this transaction, put it as sick, and then put it here close and open here so you now have the what the transaction so once you have the transaction so you can get now the batch transaction from this uh, uh synchronous so to get the batch transaction just simply say uh batch equals to transaction dot batch okay something like that all right uh then after doing that now we're going to to loop Okay, we're going to loop through our list in between here. Okay, we're going to loop through, loop through our what? Our list response to data. Why is it crying? Okay, it can be null. Are you sure? Please first see. 
if we are able to reach here because they say that it can now be none at this point okay let's see if this data is being able to reach here dot to string before we start to do the saving i hope you can see that so this will be like this is a transaction <laughs> i don't know if you tell you like it will make sure that everything here is executed and saved at once okay so let's go ahead and run yeah we are able to reach there you see the data is there so we are here so everything is okay okay so i see here sql no such a table financial period uh, why let's see again yeah so i think it has not initialized it why did we initialize that get db and make sure that he initializes okay so everything is fine now all right so at this point we are here now so what we're going to do we're going to first get our object and put it to json and then you can now just convert it back okay to, from json so it shall just simply say uh, financial period equals to financial period i can say maybe item equals to financial period dot from json so let's go ahead and create the from json method okay so from json method okay the, the the method that gets something from what from json okay so let's go ahead and create this one because i've not created it i hope you're here together right we're here together so i'm going to create the from json method that will be getting the data from this one and then put it back to so let's go ahead and create it so i just simply come here and just come here in the bottom we have to json it is there so i can create also from json okay so there it is let me just come and put here and make this one do it for me so copilot has done it for me so it will it will receive a map of spring dynamic okay and then after it will go ahead and create for me an object like this from json okay so i didn't know this kind of design hmm. so it is financial period from json and okay so financial period from json it receives a, a this one and then open curl bracket so okay this design i did know it and then you just go ahead and initialize the id so the id is going to be we make sure that it's an integer but make sure that's an integer you can just simply say utils dot int i mean from integer okay so we now have to create uh, our variable that will be passing from integer okay so let's, I mean, our, our method. So let's go to utilities and create a method that will be just getting, uh, that will be passing something and make it an integer. Okay. Have it here. Let me come and explain it. So I come in utils and I create a variable called, I mean, a class, I mean, sorry, a function called what? Uh, int pass. Okay. So int pass, it just uh, does like that. Okay. Make sure that it's an integer. It receives a dynamic, it checks if it's not null, all that stuff, and then pass it as an integer and then return back. So it can also maybe, uh, let me first, let's say that it's a decimal point. Sometimes someone, a variable can be a decimal point, so we need first remove the decimals. So let me say, uh, and let me come here and put here. You know, I have a lot of I have experience, <laughs> so I know what I'm doing. Eh? So I'll come and put here. Let me make this one x. I mean, let me make this one y, and this one y. So x, it is a string. So you are going to make sure that this is uh, y dot what dot string. Okay, we first convert it to string, and then we check if this it contains. I mean, sorry, check x if it contains contains a full stop okay it contains a full stop 
we go ahead and split it and get the first section so if everything that is after the decimal point it should go otherwise if you don't do this you're going to have millions billions of money so that is how you do it so you can pause the video and see how i'm converting this one from from to, to integer so that is it so you shall come here and just simply say to from integer and then you pass a json id like this okay so likewise uh from string uh i also have that one that will work on the string sometimes things will come as null some things will come as as empty strings so you may need to get rid of those things that are having null we just make them to be an empty thing so this is a method i've already created it so let me come here and put it next to this one okay so you can check our from to string okay if it contains a list i convert it to, to commas okay so this is uh to string it receives that it is a list changes to to, to what to separated commas you see so you can go ahead and watch that very carefully so you can understand it this one just to list okay it just converts something to list smoothly and if you want to put maybe a default value you can as well uh, put it okay i think i should just do like this because most of the time you don't need to put default value like this okay so you have seen that so let's go ahead so that is to string okay so let's go ahead and now uh surround this one. instead of just putting them like this it's better we just surround them with what with two strings so that we can know that we have uh things that sound like how we want okay so i don't know how i'm going to do for these ones also i just let me i don't know so they need just to do the same thing repeatedly let me just do it because i'm going to show you how we're going to get rid of all of this so that is we are converting it from json okay that okay so that is uh from json just financial period from json and then receive a map yeah like that now let's go ahead and try to call it and see everything is fine so i hope you've seen that yeah i hope you've seen it yeah how we've designed it all right let's see what the problem is and the error is the error is now here in this side of what is it crying about Financial period. This thing, I also saw it, it is not going to help us. Let's just change the whole thing. Let me just do the one that I know. Let me go back because I might have messed up things. So we are here from JSON. So I want to create now from JSON method. So this from JSON just going to be like this, just static and then to receive dynamic ah, like that. So let's go ahead and and create from JSON. Let's go ahead and create from JSON, okay? So from JSON is going to always receive this object here, eh? receive back the object. So it's going to be a uh, financial this copilot sometime also it can lead into miss financial period model so it's going to be static financial period and then you say from json yeah like this is what I expected so I create the object now I want us to do like this I don't know if that is okay yeah I think that's okay only that uh, we need just to surround this one with um, 
with utils that int pass so I'm going to show you how we're going to automate all these bullshit things so we can that's going to be to string is it to str yeah this one here so it's going to be here and here like this okay so let's go to go ahead and duplicate this one do for this do for this duplicate this one do for uh do for this do for this duplicate this one do here do here duplicate this one do here do here all right duplicate the copy that one put here put here uh, cut this one put here put here okay cut description put here put here Total investment put here put here uh total sales put here mm -hmm. yeah that's it that is uh, our from json eh? from json you see that is from json so it's tiresome but i'm going to show you how to get rid of it so it is converting to this object and check getting it from json okay so here i was checking if it is null you should just go back <laughs> okay so i check if this is what is null you should just go back and i always make this one maybe dynamic something like that yeah so sometimes you check if it is a map if it's not a map yeah so like this i think this is enough all right so let's go back uh now let's try to see if we are able to convert this from json to this one so how can you see you can just see by just simply printing uh the name and see if the name came okay so let me just come here and put it here between you can put here the id and then put here and just display so dot what that name and you see if really uh it, it it converted from json if this method that we just created now if it works let's go ahead and save so click on financial period right you see it is working can you see that it is perfectly working hope you can see that it is perfectly working that is so nice Mm -hmm. so after doing that now let's go ahead and now proceed to uh to saving okay uh so we are looping so i've got it from json now we're going to insert it to uh, database okay so let me go ahead and just simply remove this you just simply say try so i'm going to submit to try and catch and then you say our batch and then say insert then you put the table name and then you say item to json so this one is converting it to json remember we already have two json here this one that converts it to json format okay so it is batch dot insert and then you open curl bracket and then you put the table name and then you put this one and then the algorithm if there is a conflict it should be replaced if there is maybe a repetition of that item it should be updated that's what it means mm -hmm. so if it fails i can make a, a toast and say maybe this thing is failing so I can be able to debug it uh, clearly. Fail to save data and then I do anything like that. So let me go ahead and put here. Uh, so after doing that, no, this is just a transaction. It's just creating these and put them in this batch. Okay, it is just a transaction. So next thing now is now to save them offline. Okay, not save them offline. I mean not really save them. So to save them, after making sure that you have looped, come outside this loop. Don't put inside the loop. Come outside the loop and then go ahead and save. Okay, so to save is batch.commit and then uh, you say continue if there's an error. So if you want to stop it if there's an error, you just say continue for an error, you say false. But if you want to skip an error, you can just go ahead and do like this. So if it failed, you can just simply say fail to commit this and then you make a toast, something like that that is ready. 
so that is how you're going to save your data on the local machine in batch so i hope you can you, can, you have seen that how to create the transaction you can pause the video and watch it very carefully because it's very important for you to understand and then how we have committed the batch so here to get all the records and first put them in a batch and then here save them at once so that is how we do what we do the batch saving all right so now we finished fetching the data from internet let's see if we don't have an error okay click on fetch you see there's no any error let's go ahead and put maybe in this loop we put success like uh we put some print success okay so i can say print and say successfully saved or can say so commit and and then i put here the number of items eh? the number of items uh, can i get your badge that link yeah i think i can so let's see if it has successful yes that is beautiful successful to commit in financial period and then you see the number of items is there is one there is no any error there is no any error so that is how you create so here i'm just going i'm just showing you how things work but now in the next video i'll go ahead and show you now how to automate all these things so now we've finished our function here now it can successfully save we have finished this green line okay now what we're going to do is now to write this function of fetching at least this video you should finish it of writing this function so we're going to find we're going to know this function number one okay of fetching from the local data so in simple terms there is no direct access to the http our access is to the saver and then this one will work on the http things of getting the data from internet so that's where we are so you can look at the video very carefully uh, this is our online function this one here it's not that we just finished i hope you can see it so you build step by step step by step step by step and then you have something giant all right so now the next thing that we're going to do right now is now to get the local database okay I, that, that is not a very complicated function uh i'm going to just do it right now uh, uh, so this says get online data so i'm going to write the one for getting local data so we'll get local items okay get local items so let me come and comment this one since we are done with this one eh? so let's just call on this one and see if it will be able to get some local items without us going to online okay so this get local items the first thing that we're going to do we're going to initialize the table okay so i think this copilot has got it what you're going to explain okay so get local items first of all it's going to return a list of financial periods okay so i'll come here to future and then put future list of what financial periods okay so after doing that and the first thing now we shall do we shall go ahead and create a what we shall go ahead and create now a, a variable called list of financial period you can see it here okay uh -huh. so after doing that the next thing we are going to initialize our what our table or initialize our database okay so let me need table no nope. let me come here we we'll first we we'll first get the database first get the database if the database fails to open i go ahead and maybe make a toast and report that the database failed to open okay so if it fails now the next thing is not to initialize the what initialize the table so maybe i can say maybe a string table table response equals to a wait such a table response so if our table response is not empty we go ahead and alert that it failed to initialize the table i hope you are together so it is successful uh so here i want to put maybe a where sometime we need to put a where so string where okay so i can put by default where one yeah okay so we go ahead and say initialize the data the table 
so now go ahead and say list maps and then say maps db query order by then maybe id you can even as well put the order if you want to and then you come here and put the what the where and then you pass the where that will have been passed to us by default it is one so where one it is almost the same thing okay so we get the data so if the data is empty we return if it's not empty we loop through this one so as we are looping we just simply say data dot add i hope you can see that dot add financial period from json remember the database brings us a json so from json we loop through the map as we do like this and then after we turn the data so that is how we get the local data you can pause the video and look at this very carefully you will make you will see that everything is here is making sense all right so that is it okay now let's see if we can be able not fetch the data so i hope you can see that eh? you watch very carefully and make sure that you understand that that is this function this one here okay now let's go ahead and see now if we can get uh, this local data so i'll come here to our function that is calling this one okay uh, we are going to come here the function that is calling so i'm going to say maybe yeah we already have this one list items let me put it here and then say equals to await but get data so let me come here and put print and say uh found and then i go ahead and put the length of the item that we have found in the database okay from that in the local db save come here and clean refresh can you see that is so beautiful can you, you see it has even displayed can you see that it has even done what it has even displayed that is so so nice okay but i still need to do a few things here so let me come back to our financial period screen and remove this okay i can surround this one with the, what you call the the what the refresh widget so I come here and surround it with what you call refresh widget come to your main list and then turn what you call refresh indicator so it, it refresh indicator will take on refresh method so on refresh you call your what your init okay so that is how you do it okay so i can come back say so i'll be able to do like you see that beautiful thing eh? so when i call it it will go ahead and call the initialized version and then it will come and fetch this thing so you see you can fetch the data very fast now i want now to show you the very final logic that we're going to do okay so i hope you've seen this one how you get the local database okay now very last one more thing now the logic okay now the whole logic now sometimes we shall have not uh if you still remember how i explained yesterday that if they if if we have some data offline we we'll first get the data offline if you don't have the data offline we'll first wait okay so i want i want to first fetch the first scenario is if the you still remember this word that i wrote here we are going to call this function if there's some data offline we send we will send that data back and then you do it do the what do the the, or the fetching online i mean in background if there is no data in all offline we shall go ahead and fetch and we shall first fetch and wait and then again fetch from offline okay so you get it so let me explain it here so here when you're calling this get items first of all we're going to first get the offline data so i get the offline data i've already written that function see so you say our list of items of this object uh -huh, equals to i can just simply come and put this one even directly here equals to get local data that is our first step okay that is our first step so after getting the local data after getting the local data so the next step is we're going to check if this data is empty if that this that this data is empty what does it mean it means that there is nothing on the what on the local machine so we are going to go we are going to wait we're going to fetch the local the online database and wait okay if we are going to first call this guy online and wait for it to first save and then we try again to fetch from the local while we are waiting okay so that is the first scenario if it is empty so if it is empty we're going to say await and then we fetch the online items so we shall wait for this online item to fetch and then after waiting we shall go ahead and try to fetch now from what from the local we again repeat so okay there, there was nothing that we found on local please can you get for us something online we go ahead and get online 
so you know online for it what it does it does the whole logic and then saves on the local you see that the whole logic and saves on local but here the, the point is we are waiting for it we are waiting okay and then after after it has finished we go ahead and now go ahead and again try to check from the local okay so if this is the case when the data is not offline so in the case when the data is offline okay we shall just fetch if there is if there's some data offline we shall just call the online so this online will come and fetch we shall just say okay online you go and we, we have got something offline but please update anything just in case you find something online but we're not going to wait for you so you see i'm not going to wait for it if i have some data the else part please go and fetch do the things when i come back i'll find the data offline i'm not going to wait for you so it's the whole point i hope you will see you have understood that so i'll wait for online if there is only some local data i don't have any data and then i'll try to fetch again after it has finished if there is some data i'll not wait for it i'll just say okay you do it in background so if you don't put a wait here it means that you will not listen you will not wait for it and then you go ahead and return whatever it has come from internet so that's it you see that is the whole logic of doing offline capability that i will not wait if there is something offline unless maybe you have some uh, uh, you do something online so it will do so the next time we come we should find that data offline something like that i hope you've understood that i hope you have understood that point that is very very uh, important and uh, uh, useful in creating these things okay and then uh, i hope you've understood it so now we are going to benchmark from this one to do the rest of what of our things okay and i'm going to show you how now we can automate all these things you just create one button and then it just generate the whole thing for you okay so i hope you've understood that so this is the get items the main parent function all right so yeah so if i come here i just click on financial period you see i have the financial period here with me so that is so nice that is so nice let's go ahead and try to see here i think that's it that's it for today it is it has been enough so in the next lecture now we shall go ahead and uh, do the real what the real uh, the real generation of data like now how can we generate this uh, whole thing so that you cannot keep on repeating yourself just press one button and then it creates for you all these things in whatever thing whatever table and then you proceed to other important things that's what you're going to do in the next draft in the next lecture so make sure that uh, you don't miss all right that's it for today uh we shall proceed from there make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel make sure that you practice make sure that you don't do it you don't give up in whatever we are training all right see you in the next lecture goodbye